So welcome to episode 3 of the Bannerlord Viking playthrough where we're focusing on roguery which gives us bonuses when we do raid villages. Throwing mainly because at the start when we put points in a roguery we just got a bunch of extra throwing so we just went with it. And throwing weapons is kind of a viking thing to do as well as we're going for two handed spec. We're not that good with two handers yet and we're mainly just focused on throwing for now because throwing seems really OP in the early game. And we've been doing pretty well in the early game. We farmed up enough money to pick up Ira the Wanderer, a really decent companion. She's got a decent amount of proficiencies and a lot of stuff stuff as well as a bow and she does have some riding as well so she's gonna be our horse archer for now and we also picked up Row the wronged who is gonna be focused more in pole arms and apparently pole arms are really good at killing horses with 70% extra damage to horses at least if they're specced into it from doing the quest at the end of the last episode we picked up a good amount of money and we do have enough to be able to afford another horse this midlands palfrey seems pretty good if we give that to Durin and keep this sumter horse in our inventory we actually get a huge bonus to inventory capacity sumter horses are really slow and I guess their purpose is to be pack animals. They get 100 bonus inventory capacity if we do have one in our party. To move quicker on the map, we'll also pick up Row the Wrong, this Sturgeon Trotter. Not the quickest mount, but I believe if everyone is mounted, we do get a bonus to movement speed on the map. With that, we're going to head out of Poros, and we're now moving at a pretty quick 8.0 speed. And that's due to the fact that we're all mounted. Although, then again, I guess if we just dismount the main character, that slows us down by 0.5, which is not that bad. Our goal this episode is to head north from Poros and make it all the way to the snow as we do get speed bonuses for fighting in the snow. As we were heading north near Lycaron, we encountered this guy, Dioskos of the Hand, who is part of the faction Hidden Hand. There's only 11 of them, and I believe we can fight these guys without pissing off any of the major factions. The only thing is we don't have full HP yet, and ooh, that guy's got a good mount. And our companion is not doing the best right now. He's kind of distracting though. I think I just... No, nope, I didn't kill one of them. I hit him for 68 only because they have good armor. I can only imagine what I'm going to hit their leader for. It's probably not going to be the best. All my companions are down and this is not looking too good. But I'm just going to try to take on some of these guys. Oh, what are these guys doing? They're kind of just stuck there. Oh, did I just kill him? What a shot, dude. I hit him in the neck and his shield was up too. Okay, um, that's really good. I don't know what the rest of these guys are doing, by the way. What are you guys doing? That was not the shot. One more for the head. A little bit higher. There's a neck shot. Another neck shot. A little bit higher, maybe? Nope. What are you guys doing? And there's one that got away. I cannot believe we actually won that. That was just the luckiest headshot on Durin through the shield. He had his shield up. And this guy is not going to go down to a butt shot. That's going to take him out though. And we just got 3.8 renown for that, which I guess that's a good amount. I kind of was expecting a bit more. We were getting like two from killing the looter parties. Ro did not get a single kill and Ira actually got one, but that was it. I guess they could have done a little bit of damage though. Dioscos of the hand, we are at your mercy. You're my prisoner now. We just got 22 prisoners. Can we even carry them all? No, we can't take them all. I guess we can only take 10. These hidden pawns are only tier two. The puppeteers are tier five though, and the hidden hands are tier three. So we'll take as many puppeteers as we can, and we'll dump two hidden hands, and just like that, we're good. We got a ton of equipment for taking those guys out though. Some really nice mounts of landing courser and an imperial charger. We can take all of this, and actually that increased our inventory capacity by quite a bit just because now we have so many spare mounts that are sitting around. We also picked up these woven leather bracers and before we didn't have any hand armor so we just got 21 more armor to the arm. And wow what a way to start off the episode. At the town of Lycaron we can ransom Diokosos for $5.95. Each of his puppeteers for 100 a pop and these hidden hands for about 30. And just for ransoming these guys off we're gonna get 1,045. On top of the 1,000 we just picked up we have a bunch of extra horses we can sell off like we got four of these saddle horses which we don't need really any of those they're not increasing our inventory capacity by that much nor is like this batanian pony and this sturgeon trotter i'm not really a fan of either on top of i think we'll sell off this iron spatha and i don't really care about these bladed throwing knives they only come with three of them each and they do 33 piercing damage versus our harpoons do 113 and there's five of them they are slightly more accurate with 95 accuracy the harpoons only have 93 and they have four more missile speed but overall these things look like they suck we also don't really need some of this food like the olive the cheese, 
the fish. And uh, we don't need six things of grain. Two should probably suffice. And uh, let's dump this pilgrim's hood and the boots as well. And with that, we're up to 3,100. We pretty much got all of that from just taking out Dioscos. Not to mention, we also did just pick up some really nice war horses. We'll give the Vlandian Courser to Ira the Wanderer. As she does have 60 riding, we don't, so we can't actually use it. And unfortunately, Ro the Wronged cannot use this Imperial Charger. We'll save this for another companion, or maybe we can use it. Though I don't think I'm going to invest much points in the riding on the main character. We'll also use this Desert Horse on the main character that Ira is using. It's quite a bit quicker than the one we were using. As far as upgrades, our Horse Archer slash two-handed user Ira does not have a two-handed weapon, and we're going to pick her up this hoe, which is a fairly low-class two-handed weapon, but it's better than nothing. Row the wrong expecting to pull arm, so we'll dump her Iron Spatha. And we'll pick her up this Triangle-Headed Spear. It's fairly long. It's a pull arm. She can use it as a one-hander or a two-hander. I believe that means she can use a shield with it, so let's get her this makeshift kite shield as well. And if she's going to be the one charging in, we should probably put a harness on her horse. This striped leather harness gives her horse 15 extra armor. We have 2,500 left over, and that might be enough to pick up this guy from the tavern, Meniclus the Robber. Meniclus and some of his bros did not want the quiet life. They wanted action. They joined up with bandits, and apparently he regretted it because they're always drunk, stabbing each other. And if that doesn't get him, then the patrols will, and they'll send him to the gallows. He didn't like that life, and now he is officially a law-abiding citizen. Right now, though, he is between jobs, and maybe we can pick him up. He's 1125, and yeah, like us, he's got a good amount of skill in roguery. Actually, he's better than us in roguery. He also has some riding, and I believe we can give him the new mount we just picked up, as well as he's got some decent weapon proficiencies. Back to the bandit life for you, Meniclus. Here's 1125. So with Meniclus, we get 5% more loot from village raids, which we already do have, and I'm not sure if these party skills stack. I would assume they do, though. Another skill in the roguery tree he has is commanding presence, less relationship penalty while using intimidation, which I don't think that actually helps us. It's a personal skill, and I think personal skills have to be on the main character to actually be useful. It's funny too, because Meniclus has 60 in roguery, but he has no focus in it, which makes sense actually with his backstory. He seemed not really into the bandit life, though he did know a bit about it because he was a bandit for some time. He has a bit of focus in riding on athletics, which is nice, and he does also have a focus for two-handed, so we'll definitely keep an eye out for more two-handed weapons. For now though, we can give him this Imperial Charger that no one else can use, seeing as he does have exactly 60 riding to be able to use it. At the town of Lycaron, there's also three people that want to give us quests. I think we'll talk to Lucky Sitika. She's a gang leader, and I think we want to do quests for them because, yep, fencing stolen goods in Lycaron. I was going to say doing a quest like fencing goods may end up boosting our roguery skill because we're selling stolen goods. Like, she has 11 loads of oil, and she'll sell them to us for 517. And apparently, we can sell them off to the next big city. I think that's actually a really good deal because, yeah, oil is pretty expensive as far as I know. She's got the goods stored somewhere, and we're going to have to go dig them up. But before we leave, we were approached by Chinon the Sutler. Apparently, the goods were taken from a colleague of his, and he'll buy them off of us for 414 as compensation. But we're not going to take that. We can get a way higher profit. This is none of your business, merchant. That's a mistake that you'll regret sooner rather than later. Oop. And our criminal rating increased. Only by two, though. I'm not sure if that is enough to make us considered a criminal. Before we leave and try to fence off the oil, we'll check out the other two quests. There's another rival gang quest moving in at Lycaron. He wants us to come back in three days, so we might consider doing that. But Escorios the Dyer also has a quest. Evidently, Iron Ore is really overpriced at Lycaron, and he wants us to find five units of it for him. I was going to say we're going to head from Lycaron over to Phycaon, but we did encounter some looters, which I think are going to charge us. I'd like to fight these guys both at once, though, and I think that might be what's happening here. Yeah, we got the group of six looters combined with the group of five looters because they were close enough, which is fine. Me and Metaclis are two manning this, no problem. He's kind of distracting, and I'm just tossing spears in. Oh. And Metaclis' horse went down. Oh no, Metaclis, I'll save you. No, I'm not going to save you. No, Metaclis went down. Okay, well, I tried. Oh, Jesus. My sickle hurt. Holy crap. Ooh. Holy crap, that was actually really close. <laughs> Okay. Well, we made it over to Phycheon, where they will not give us that good of a price for oil. We'll dump out pretty much everything else, though, for a small profit. And they do have some interesting arrows here, which do blunt damage, which I'm pretty sure do a bit less damage than piercing damage, but they are more likely to just knock people out and not kill them. The bow itself does piercing damage, so I'm not sure if this is even going to matter, but it would make sense that if the arrows do blunt damage and, like, they're tournament arrows, which I'm guessing that means they're used in tournaments, so they're not supposed to kill people. And so one would assume these arrows would not be killing people and just knocking them out. There's 
There's also this girl in the tavern, Verona at the Wronged, who actually isn't that expensive, only 866. However, we apparently already have more companions than we can manage. I guess there's a companion limit in Bannerlord, which is kind of a shame. I mean, she's not terrible. She's got like 80 riding with relatively decent weapons as well. Evidently, to be able to recruit more companions, we need a higher clan tier. We're currently at clan tier zero. And I guess to boost that, we need more renown, which you just get renowned by doing quests and winning battles. At Phykeon across the river, I noticed there was a pretty big group of the Hidden Hand faction. There was 35 of them, and I decided just to chase them down to see if maybe they'd run into, I don't know, like a lord or something, and we could help the lord out. Yeah, I definitely don't think we can take that guy with his 35 units, but maybe we can take a Skiron of the Hand. He's only got 20. I think before, though, the other guy had like 11, so this is definitely going to be harder, but we do have more companions now. Or actually, better yet, maybe we can pick up some mercenaries at like Charon. They do have six mercenary scouts, but they're really expensive. We can only afford two of them. I guess we'll pick them up. I'm assuming that they're mounted because, yeah, their armor doesn't look all that amazing. So I guess that's why they're so expensive. Oh man, their stats aren't that amazing. Their gear looks terrible. They don't even come with shields. I think we kind of got ripped off there. <laughs> the mercenary horsemen and the mercenary cavalry are the ones we wanted. Definitely not the scouts, but that's right. Maybe that'll be just what we needed to take on a Skiron of the Hand and his 20 troops. All right, so the strat here is we're just going to try to take out their main dude and we want everyone to just focus him. Wait, is he already down? Uh, what? Okay, I'm just gonna try to get in there and just get as many kills as I can with these spears before our units get taken out. I'm just using them as kind of a distraction for now. These guys have throwing weapons, so I gotta be really careful. But man, that was an amazing start to the battle. <laughs> guy just ran in and died. That's pretty funny. Throw a spear in like that group of units. Yeah, there's no way that doesn't hit something, right? These guys are not paying attention. And spear to the head. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of these guys are not really looking at me. Maybe a spear. Yep. Just gotta throw a spear there. Oh, and they're all running. That's what I'm talking about, baby. We still got 20 of these guys. Let's go. I will say that we only were really able to do that because their leader just charged in like an idiot. But hey, I'm not complaining. Another headshot. Shot to the abdomen. And let's get a headshot. And another one. That was a headshot too, I think. Yeah, called it. Not that it was very hard. They're literally running away. Did win indeed. I think we're getting like good axe skill for doing this too, and we're getting free axe skill, which is nice. Oh, and they got out. Askeron of the hand, you are my prisoner now. And we just picked up a puppeteer prisoner as well as a bunch of hidden hands. Apparently we can now take 12 prisoners, which is based on our party size. I think the mercenary scout does help as well as we now have an extra companion. And they also had some empire peasants as prisoner. These guys were their prisoners, and so they will actually join us, which actually is going to allow us to take more prisoners. We can also pick up this hidden pawn. I don't know if we're going to keep these empire peasants, but for now, We'll just have them help us carry these prisoners around. And yep, we just picked up a ton of loot. Another Vlandian Courser. Reinforced Kite Shield. A really nice shield. We'll give that to one of our companions. As well as this Open Mail Coif. Way better than what we're using. Wait, we actually got two of those Coifs as well. Let's give one to Ira. She's definitely our better combat companion. Some more Leather Bracers. We'll give those to Ira too. And Lordly Padded Mittens. I'll be taking those. Yoink. They have a value of 1500 Wow. They also had some shoulder pads, which we have no cape right now so we'll use those and ooh, we're looking nice this studded leather over Akaton is gonna make us look even nicer though this thing has way more armor than what we were using 16 body armor versus what we were using only at 5 11 leg armor versus before we had 2 and 6 arm armor versus our previous one we'll give the reinforced kite shield to Menaclis and maybe we should give him some of these throwing weapons because yeah even though he only has one focus point in it he has 90 throwing skill and he has this upgrade that we don't even have yet fully armed one extra thrown weapon per pack. Maybe what we'll do is for now we'll just take his weapons and we'll just give him a bunch of these throwing knives. We'll just give him four of these leaf blade throwing knives. And he's gonna have four of each of these and he'll just be running around on a horse throwing stuff at the enemy. We picked up another bracers for some extra hand armor for Ro the Wronged as well as we'll give her this reinforced kite shield I guess. We'll also give her this northern fur cap that we were previously using. Not the best headpiece but it's better than nothing and we'll give Menaclis these studded leather van braces that we also picked up to get him a bit of hand armor and with that I think we're done with the upgrades. Now 
actually that was perfect timing it's been three days and we can now do the rival gangs quest at Lycaron. the dude we're supposed to take out poxy is again gonna double whatever losis was gonna pay us and that's again gonna amount up to 940 why would we not take this deal i'm gonna try to run and get away from these guys before i get killed okay wait we got out good ira killed a looter yeah ira is killing our dudes i think this is not good that's a mercenary scout that we just took out I think we killed him. Hopefully we didn't kill him. And oh no, apparently we killed the mercenary scout. That sucks. That's like, how much was two of them? 700? So that's like 350 right there. Row the wrong didn't Ira also got knocked out. So that was kind of suck. But we did end up getting 940 for that. So overall we got a huge profit. I just wish we could have let our troops in on the memo that yeah, we're going to backstep them, join our side. On top of that 940 we picked up from the quest, we do have a bunch of horses we can sell off. We're going to keep this Vlandian Courser though. As well as these three Sumter horses, they can carry a bunch bunch of goods but the rest of these aren't really all that useful for us off of just selling the horses that's a 76 plus the rest of our gear is 1625 i did also almost forget we do have some prisoners we can ransom a seer on the hand will net us 393 which doesn't seem like much considering he has a really nice mount and some really nice gear as well it's the way we can't execute him and steal all that gear but that's just how the game works the gear would apparently evaporate if we were to do something like that we're also going to dump off most of these prisoners but we're going to keep around this puppeteer which is a tier 5 unit mainly because because apparently if we keep him in our party for long enough he might end up joining us dragging around the prisoners does slow down the party though which is why we're only going to keep one of them but yeah with that we're now up to over 3400 coin and we do have these five empire peasants in our party that are slowing us down we may have a good use for these guys as outside of lycaron there are these five forest bandits that we're going to engage who i guess are running from us they believe they are weaker we're gonna use them as distraction to hopefully draw some fire from these archers and we're just gonna try to hit some shots from a distance. Oh, this guy's on us. And he hit us in the chest, or a horse in the chest. And oop, nice spear on that guy. Oh, and that guy turned around, but we got him in the head. And we got that guy in the arm. I think that's it. We've still got two Empire Peasants alive, too. That guy has one arrow sticking out of his... That's right in his neck. He should not be alive. We picked up three Bushwhackers as prisoner. They're tier two archers. As well as we got some fairly low value loot. We get this rough hide cap to Meniklis though, and he's looking like quite the goofball. These woodland garments are also way better than what Roe the Wrong was using. And with that, I think we'll end this episode. As for me, it's getting fairly late, but starting in the next episode, Dioskos of the Hand is back on the field and he's got 23 units. We're kind of just farming this hidden hand faction and we're getting pretty rich off of doing it. That's what we'll be doing at the start of the next episode. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you then.